The Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force uh, grew out of California's climate policy and the, the idea of having RED uh, implemented uh, in partnership with tropical states and it's now grown. There's 26 states and provinces, uh, much of Indonesia, Brazil, Peru, Mexico are part of the task force. So this is a long-term collaboration and this year things sort of really came together. Uh, the idea was to um, send a message to the climate summit here in New York that the tropical governors are ready to do their part. Um, they're ready to reduce deforestation 80% by 2020, but they need help. They need uh, to know that the markets will recognize their efforts. Uh, they need to know that there will be enough finance for doing the jobs that they're doing. And uh, what's really in interesting um, about this uh, declaration, though, is that they committed to, to channel a substantial share of all red revenue uh, or climate revenue towards indigenous people and communities. And that's always been sort of a, a big question, you know, if, how will the money get to the people who really need it who are on the ground in the forest? So right now it's just a commitment that to really be implemented will need uh, finance and market partnerships and all of those things are under construction right now. 21 of 26 have signed. Uh, the remaining to sign um, are governments that are coming into elections. And they basically are very busy right now. They would rather wait. The, the elections are in two weeks. <laughs> and so uh, we think that by Lima we'll have all signed. California has not signed. Uh, and we've been uh, communicating with Jerry Brown's staff uh, about this potential. and. Uh, I actually met with Jerry Brown, Governor Brown, um, a couple months ago, and I showed him Brazil's tremendous progress in lowering deforestation, explaining that uh, that it would be 10 times more emissions reductions, well, 10 times more emissions reductions already achieved than AB 32, the, the California policy, will achieve by 2020. And he's, he loved that, and he wanted to know more. How did they do it? Um, he announced it in one of his speeches later that day. Uh, and so I think Jerry Brown is extremely, extremely interested in finding solutions to climate change. Um, and I think they'll, they'll eventually sign. They're very important, right. Um, California could do a lot to, for example, uh, address the, the finance piece because California has a, an international offset provision for RED. It's uh, jurisdictional, I mean, in other words, it's designed not for projects, but to link up with entire states and provinces. What's fascinating to me is that the governors are not asking for industrialized countries to pay the whole bill. Um, Mato Grosso, for example, is a huge, huge agricultural economy that's uh, reduced its deforestation rate by more than 80%. If it were a country, it would be one of the top climate change mitigators uh, for its achievement. It's more than half of the decline in the Amazon. They haven't received a cent, you know. And uh, I think any sign from California that they want to have a partnership and get some investments flowing to reduce deforestation, to support communities, that would be all, all that would be necessary to galvanize the political support for a low deforestation agenda in Mato Grosso. So it's. Um, in that sense, it's one of the best deals going for climate change mitigation and conserving forests at the same time. Yes, I think the, uh, the large show of corporate interest in, uh, in the low deforestation agenda uh, is getting a lot of attention. I talked to some at breakfast with some of the corporate leaders. They, um, they say that this is really helping uh, because the word is out that this is the new reality. If you're going to grow commodities, you cannot clear forests to expand them. Uh, and uh, so I think there's a lot of momentum. A lot of the political leaders are actually more sensitive and, and tuned into that private sector support than they are necessarily to having, you know, a bunch of finance flow into their state. They see the private sector engagement as where they're going to get investment where they're going to get jobs, where they're going to get increases in yields and production, but also how they'll get their communities the technical support that they need. 
it is this really deeper commitment from some of the big companies. The fact that Cargill has come in and Wilmar and uh, Gar uh, alongside of the old you know, steadfast Unilever, that's a very big deal. Uh, I think the, I love seeing yesterday in plenary Governor Taras Narang from Central Kalimantan, a Dayak leader, announcing the GCF commitment. He's the perfect one to say that because he had already implemented an 80% commitment last year for his province. And, and I was with him a month ago uh, in Jakarta when he convened 20 palm companies and he basically told him, you will get with this agenda. And uh, so I think that private sector, regional government collaboration with indigenous people at the table and, and potentially getting big benefits is really exciting.